We also are supporting Save the Children. Save the Children invests in childhood every day in terms of crisis and for our future. In the United States and around the world, we give children a healthy start, the opportunity to learn and uh, protection from harm. By transforming children's lives now, we can change the course of their future and ours. Last year, Save the Children worked in 120 countries and helped more than 185 million children. For, for more information about our programs, please visit savethechildren.org. And it looks like we're good to go with the girl and the robot being run by a proto-magical girl. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Um, hi, my name's Proto Magical Girl. My pronouns are it, it's, or she, her, if you're boring. Uh, this is the girl and the robot. A really cool and wholesome uh, adventure puzzle, uh, like two body puzzler about friendship between a girl and a robot. Uh, just let me know when we're good. Cause I'm, yeah, hi, I, I'm Proto Magical Girl. I just introduced myself. It's 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> uh, but on the couch, I have Leggy Starscream, Violet Moon, and a bunch of stuffed animals. They're very important. Um, and in your ears, we have Salim Ladochel, who is the lead developer of this game. Hi, Salim. Hello, guys. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck with your run. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited. So just, just for some context here, Salim hasn't seen this run. Yes, so... I... I was off the internet. I didn't search anything about any speedrun. I, I wanted you to surprise me. So, Salim, I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry okay. about all the cool <laughs> stuff that we're not going to see. I promise there's a lot of cool stuff we will see. Um, Can you turn down my voice just a little bit? And then we should be ready to go. Yes. How about... Okay, yeah, that's much better. Yeah. Now I can hear myself think. And we'll also be able to hear an audio cue earlier. So are we ready to go? All right, so let's play this video game in three, two, one, go. So this is The Girl and the Robot. This was released in 2016 uh, by Flying Carpets Games. We're playing the PC version, which is the best version because you can use a mouse. Uh, the mouse allows you basically complete freedom of camera movement instead of being limited by like a D-pad speed. Um, that's going to allow us to do a lot of extremely fluid platforming. Uh, so this game's the girl and the robot. Oh, I forgot about our incentive. What's winning the, the bid war? Looks like white dress is in front right now. Okay, well, we need to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so white dress. So we're going all original costumes. All right, take two. Three, two, one. Go! Hey, so this is the girl in the robot, um, now featuring white dress, and I, I mean, I guess that's the choice y'all made, and I respect it. The white dress is simple and pretty. It's, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, so yeah, this is the girl in the robot. It's a game about a girl and a robot. So first we're gonna get the girl. Um, and what the girl can do is she can run, she can jump, uh, she can crawl through tight spaces. And she's fast, so we're gonna be mostly using the girl. So I'm jumping all over the place. It's faster to jump, um, instead of even just running. Don't know why. But I mean, hey, it happens. This is not the only video game that you jump everywhere in. Uh, so we're just gonna head across this nice long uh, walkway, appreciate this fog effect. It's a very nice fog effect, Salim. And then in this cage up ahead is our robot, who's the other playable character in this game, but not quite yet. So our first task is to hit this switch, which we're gonna do from a very specific position. In this game, you can hit uh, switches from a pretty wide range of spots. But when you do, um, you get pushed to the spot that you actually interact from. Oh god, robots falling from the sky. Um, so we want to be doing all of our interacts in this game from the right spot. Now we're going to grab this pendant that lets us control the robot. So the first thing we're going to do with the robot is a glitch. And just kind of slide through that door. Uh, how we did that was by using the rocket dash cancel that the robot has. So if you do an action, then tap a direction on the arrow keys, and then tap space to do a rocket dash, you can oh. uh, yeah. cancel into a nice little directional dash. Uh, now we have the cutscene, and now that the girl and the robot are together, we've unlocked the most important button in the game, the friendship button. So now we head up this away. I want to say something about the, the jump for the, the girl. I, I remember coding this part. Uh, it's true that you have uh, like more forward momentum when you jump forward. 
Yeah. And the reason why I did that is because uh, I was I was uh, playtesting a lot and I felt like the it was a, a good game feel. It's like it was more. So that's, but I didn't think that people would jump all the, the whole game. <laughs> it does, it, the move in this game does real, feel really good. So instead of going back down this elevator like uh, you want us to, we're just going to do this. Oh. Okay. Um, that warped the robot to the top of the elevator because uh, save points in this game oh. um, only have a single girl and robot position. All right, now we're going to go for something kind of silly. Uh, if I mess this up, I'm going to lose 40 seconds. So I'm going to try it exactly once and then go for safe strats. Hopefully we won't need a second round. Um, so we're gonna go this way with the girl. Uh, Salim, is this intended? This is not intended. I no, it's don't not. know what you're doing and I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to bring the robot up here. Um, yes, and yes, then, yes. oh, hey, we're getting a really good spawn pattern. Yeah, that was, that was easy. All right, well, it's not quite over yet because now we have to do a window jump and we have to make this first try. Um, so there's a little invisible wall at this corner but it's not quite big enough. <laughs> if you move the mouse really precisely, uh, those window jumps took tons <laughs> of practice to get good at. And then we death warp back over here. Um, the reason we did that was to hit the checkpoint on the inside of uh, that door. Oh, okay. That's fine. We're, we're out of the lose 40 seconds zone. The second window jump you can retry easily. Um, so the saves, oh, wow, hang on. Okay, we're fine. Window jumps are maybe one of the hardest things in this game, so I'm glad those are done. Um, so the save system in this game uh, is probably the most important thing in how we've designed this run. In this game, how you progress is by moving from checkpoint A to B to C and fulfilling any uh, requirements those checkpoints have. How you get from checkpoint to checkpoint basically doesn't matter. Um, so what we've essentially done is routed just the fastest way to get from checkpoint to checkpoint. If you skip checkpoints, you'll end up with a category that we call glitched ending, uh, where you can make it to the elevators to the final boss but can't progress at all, because the elevators won't go up. Um, but this is the full game run, so we're going to be hitting every checkpoint in the game. Um, most of the checkpoints in this game are just position-based, but there are a few that have special events, and I'll note most of those as we hit them. Uh, so the girl can crawl through tight spaces, and now we have this little uh, split puzzle here. Uh, gonna need some quiet for a second, because this is an audio cue. So that's pattern three. Uh, we picked the gold skin. Pattern three is like the medium speed pattern. Um, as far as I know, that's completely random. Uh, we have some suspicions that that might be time-based because the three of us who run this game uh, seem to get pretty consistent patterns if we go at the same time, but we're not quite sure. Uh, uh, it is uh, random. Uh, good to know. So we're supposed to bring completely the random. <laughs> we're supposed to bring the girl and the robot up here to stand on those switches, but the switches have inertia, so we can just uh, run quite run right over them. So now we're in the second area of the game. This is town. Um, and it's more of the game. This, this area isn't special, I suppose. We have one, one neat trick that we might do, depending on what robot spawns we get. Um, if we get the right spawn, I'll do a really cool damage boost and turn this robot into a new bot. Uh, we're gonna dash cancel that switch just to move a little faster. Okay, we got the good spawn. So, what I'm gonna do, first is I'm gonna go do what I need to do with the girl, and then we're gonna, that robot behind the gate is going to attack our robot. Um, and we're gonna let the robot lose all three pieces of its armor, um, and that will make it extremely fast. So we're gonna basically just hole up in this corner and take a bunch of damage. So that's one piece of armor. That's two pieces of armor. Get ready for this, it's super worth it, I promise. And now we're super fast! Look at this. Uh, the, the member of the community who actually devised this strat, uh, Dalador, initially proposed this some couple months ago. And I initially was like, hey, there's no way this is faster. Damage boosting takes so long. And then I tried it once and saw just how fast the robot moves. And then I believed it. So now we're gonna do another little skip. You're supposed to send the robot into this building. Oh, wow. Um, and fight some robots. Uh, instead, we're just gonna... I don't normally have this much trouble with this, but hey, it's fine. There we go. You can just do that instead, and the robots in that building will give you no trouble. Jump up 
here. Then switch back and head through here. Hey, Salim, is that room that we just yeah. went through the artisan's house? Is uh, that the lore? <laughs> uh, I no, it's uh, sorry, it's uh, it's a room that I just put stuff in it, but there's <laughs> there's no. Oh really dang! Sorry. I got yeah, really I... excited when I noticed the bird cage. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, that's the artisan's room, the lore. Uh, we're gonna oh, backstab no. that robot and then head through here. Now that we've done that, this gate will go down, and now we can head down to what we refer to as the laser basement, because it's a basement full of lasers. <laughs> I'm really enjoying myself, by the way. I'm I, glad. Like the the jumps and everything, like. I... Just wait until you see Maze. <laughs> I think you're gonna really enjoy. Maze is the next area of this game, and it's where this game really shines as a speedrun. Uh, we basically don't use the robot at all, spoiler alert. Uh, did that stick? Yeah, okay. So the gimmick of this laser basement, as you can see, is kind of switching back and forth on these switches. Um, oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> We're fine. Um, so unfortunately, there's not a ton of skips you can do. Okay, we got the robot in there. This is the best pattern of the three robot... Hang on. Of the three spawns you can get here, this is the best one. There we go. And we're gonna stand on this switch and bring the girl on over. Uh, there's only two spots in this game with like really significant randomness. Uh, we've now seen both of them, so pretty much smooth sailing from here. Put the robot on this switch, put the girl here. Um, and then for those of you who are familiar with Yoshi's Island, uh, we have a little trick here that I like to call gate hack where we just do that. And that oh, wow. saves uh, some arrows, basically. So we just did all of this laser basement stuff because the save point at the end of this area is one of those event-based event -based triggers that I was talking about earlier. We need to bring, I believe, the robot all the way over here to hit this save point. Uh, then, however, it is time for sequence break city. You're supposed to go essentially do a second lap through this basement, but that's not happening. Sorry, Salim. <laughs> Things are about to get a little bit nonsense. Um, this is where the run starts to get really fun. Okay. So we're gonna go jump on this. Then mm. climb up around here. Oh dear, and then we're gonna die apparently. Uh, okay, that's fine. We can just go. <laughs> Cough, that's never happened before. Cough. <laughs> <laughs> the dev is watching me play the game. It's a little bit of pressure. It's fine, though. <laughs> uh, so we're going to head up this way and not die this time. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with uh, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, you may be familiar with a speedrun trick called a zombie hover. This is the true zombie hover. We rise up through a graveyard. <laughs> so also, one of the two Easter eggs in the game is in that graveyard. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, then we're going to push this uh, altar, and then we're going to do some more wild jumps. So we're going to jump up that slope, and then along this fence, then on these pointy things, and onto a tree, and hope the tree is nice to us. The tree was nice to us. Then head <laughs> over here. Uh, what we just did was skip a bunch of stuff. Uh, like I said, we have to go checkpoint to checkpoint. We can't skip any checkpoints, so now we're going to head up here to hit the checkpoint that's up here, but then resume the nonsense. You're supposed to pull the rope on a bell uh, behind where... Oh, gosh. Behind where I was, and I'm now going to be again. Um, but you don't have to do that. We can actually get around this big door that we're supposed to open. Uh, in this game, the girl can climb any sloped surface, no matter how steep, uh, by running and jumping. So that's what we're going to do. And so we just skipped a bunch of stuff. Like, there's a lot. So now we're uh, in the arena where the mini boss, or not the mini boss, the, the mid game boss is going to be. Uh, first, we have to do some stuff in it. Um. Oh. Was that an attendant? No. Or was it a glitch from my I, side? I, there have been a couple <laughs> times where the runners of this game uh, have Ooh. had okay. falling through the floor errors. Uh, but, oh, I see what happened. It looks like this uh, little 
bit of geometry there didn't load. Oh, maybe. Um, okay, we might have a problem. <laughs> this is not supposed to happen, I promise. Um, okay. Okay, here's what we're gonna do real quick. Um, cause that's not working. So we're just gonna fix this. Um, I, 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 I've never seen this before. I, I spent some time <laughs> dissecting the registry editor for the game, so we can essentially okay. use it to manipulate what save point we're at, which is really great for practicing. Uh, obviously not really allowed in runs. Uh, anyways, I'm just gonna skip that since it didn't want to work properly. Uh, so we were supposed to do some stuff with some cannons. Uh, that's not what we're gonna do now, that's okay. Uh, so yeah, we just skipped a bunch of stuff and left the back of the arena, and now we're supposed to fight the mid-game boss. Um, as much as I thought this boss's design was really cool, Salim, I'm sorry, we're not gonna. <laughs> it's all right. This is giving me a lot of trouble today. There we go, okay. So we're gonna climb this mountain, because this is basically Celeste now. Um, like I said, you can climb any sloped surface in this game, no matter how steep. And you see that box there? That's the loading zone for the next area. So what's really interesting about this boss fight is that there isn't actually a checkpoint um, after you beat the boss. It's only after you enter the door after beating the boss. So you just need to hit that loading zone, and then you make it to the next area. Uh, if we do this wrong, we soft lock, but hey, it's fine. All right, we're good. So bye-bye, oh, yeah. mini boss. <laughs> Sorry, Salim. That's kind of cool, actually. It's a neat, it's a neat trick, and it's nice for the speed run because the the mini boss, the mid boss is cool, but it's also really yeah. a long fight. True, um, true. So we're just gonna head this way. So this is maze. This is uh, where this game really shines as a speed run. Um, we're not gonna use the robot basically at all. We're just gonna skip everything. So like I said. Most of the save points in this game are positional. Basically, every save point in this maze is, so we're just gonna, uh, to make a long story short, do a lot of taking advantage of bits of geometry to jump on, around, and over things. Oh, we got a beep boom, that's fine. Those purple robots are called beep booms, by the way, because they're beep boops that go boom. Uh, and then we're gonna jump up there, hit another save point on the other side of this door. Um, and since we've done all the proper progression, uh, after we jump off of this thing and hit that save point, this elevator will come up for us. Uh, if you miss a save point, it won't. Uh, elevators just kind of stop working if you're off of the proper save progression, which again is how we get the glitched ending category. Then we're just gonna hit that save point down there and that skipped a huge long uh, platforming segment where you have to like switch between the girl and the robot and it's really neat, but it is slow. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna jump up here. And we're gonna go up here. Uh, what I'm doing right now is skipping a cutscene. Um, there's supposed to be like a dramatic camera angle that shows the doors to those robots opening, uh, but nah. It's actually not strictly faster to skip the cutscene. There's actually a slightly faster way of doing uh, that uh, movement there that actually ends up being about the same speed as the cutscene skip. Oh, here's our purple robot conga line. Uh, but I personally find the cutscene cut skip method for that trick to be better. We're gonna fall down, so we end up up. I don't know why I switched there. Uh, it seems that that save point only has a horizontal value, so you can just kind of teleport up here. So what I'm gonna do now is walk along the edge of this platform uh, carefully, uh, because if we're along the edge of this platform, these robots can't uh, path to us, so we can just run by them. That's, uh, that's something that's gonna be relevant later, so those of you doing your homework, remember that one. So yeah, that was, that was the majority of Maze. Like I said, that's probably the, the coolest segment of the game, but we do have quite some cool stuff left. Uh, in Town 2, we have some fun uh, skips. So now we have, I missed a tile, that's fine. Now we have your classic uh, Legend of Zelda style floor puzzle, or floor tile puzzle, uh, with the added twist of you need to split the tiles 50-50 between the characters. This is what I like to call the robot run. Easy, first try every time. That's actually not super easy, so I'm glad I got it. Um, then the girls part is pretty easy. This one's actually easy. You just kind of run in circles. Those aren't circles, but you know what I mean. It's 4.30 in the morning. Uh, so now we're gonna dash cancel that to gain a little bit more speed and then head up into town two. Then we're gonna ring this bell to open the door to the next area. 
but oh no, there's all these purple robots in our way. How are we gonna get past all of these and quickly to boot? Well, you see, Salim. Yeah. If you jump on this tree, then jump along this wall, and then jump around out of bounds, <laughs> they stop working. <laughs> They're just chilling. Oh, yeah. I, uh, this, you're supposed to hit a trigger just before this area that you skip. It, but... Yeah, we skip the we skip the doorway. Um, so now we're in the final area of the game. This is Castle. Uh, we're gonna skip a bunch of puzzles by doing that, uh, and then we're gonna head this way. Um, you can get up onto this ledge from that ledge in the ground. Uh, then we're gonna head over here, hit a save point and jump off this ledge and death abuse. Uh, the death abuse is faster because it brings the robot all the way over here for us. Uh, then we're gonna hit this switch, just like that. And we've positioned and timed our movement here uh, very precisely such that uh, we've skipped both animations of uh, those doors opening and closing. Also, we're walking on water now. Yeah, I should fix that. I should have fixed that. <laughs> Honestly, this makes the speed run way better, so please don't fix it. It's way more fun this way. Instead of doing the whole like long gauntlet of fights, you just get to walk on water. All right, so now we're headed to the final boss. Uh, despite the game's efforts to stop us, there's a melancholy painting. Uh, so we're gonna stand on a switch. I really love this like final room with the mirror. It's super dramatic and really cool. So now we're in the final boss. Uh, this fight can be mean sometimes, but hopefully it won't be mean. So the intended way of doing this is by putting the girl on that platform in front of me. Uh, however, if we just do that instead, um, the girl can chill there for the entire fight and not get caught by robots. So phases one and two of this fight are pretty easy. You just run forward, basically. Uh, time is coming up, hopefully. Phase three is the hard one because we have multiple robots coming at us. But we look like we're good. Time. Oh, nice. Holy moly. That was a run, you know, with the whole, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> falling through the floor. It happens. So what'd you think, Salim? Congratulations. I'm, I'm very impressed. Like, uh, I, I, I've, I've been testing the game and trying to do what you're doing while I was making the game. And uh, I couldn't do it because I don't have the skills to, <laughs> to play like that. So just to see someone breaking everything, that's uh, that's really impressive. This and, this uh, <laughs> this speedrun is so much fun. Like I, I found this game casually on a whim and then ended up picking up the speedrun and it's just a great time, sad ending. Yeah. Well, this is our first game and we're gonna do a, a sequel of this game and hopefully, uh, but I'm gonna think about speedrunner what I do the second game. Thank you. So, That's very appreciated. That. <laughs> so uh, while these credits are rolling, hey, there's your name. Wow. Um, <laughs> I already shouted out Dalador. The other active member of the girl in the robot speedrunning community is Perkis M. Perkis was basically the pioneer of speedrunning this game um, and invented most of the route and tricks that we use. Uh, if you thought this game was cool, uh, you should totally run it. It's so much fun. And it's a great game. Uh, we have a Discord. Uh, you can find it at speedrun.com slash TGATR. Uh, there's a link to the Discord there. We do a weekly race every Sunday morning, uh, which is a great way to learn. Also, I did a whole tutorial for this game on my YouTube channel. So you should, you should play this game. Thank you so much for having me, GDQX. Uh, this has been The Girl and the Robot. Thank you so much, Salim, for waking up early for me. I'm really glad you enjoyed this. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It was a blast. <laughs> And thank you, Proto, Proto Magic Girl, for your awesome run. Coming up next, we've got uh, Environmental Station Alpha being run by Asheria. And after that, Spelunky HD by Meow Mix Mix. And of course, following that is Shantae being run by Winterbit. We do have uh, a few donations from that last run. The Last Remnant of the Dress War, $10 from Violet Moon saying blue dress, blue dress, blue dress emoji. <laughs> and $100 from Jack saying a lazy Saturday, GDQ is on, and Proto Magic Girl is running. Heck yeah, this is the best day.
Hi, it's me, Proto Magical Girl. You just watched me play a video game. Uh, just as a reminder, there's a really cool prize for that video game. Um, it's a really pretty perler made by Lizstar with custom sprite work made by Biss. Um, and it's, it's very nice, and you should try and win it. Fight for that prize. Awesome announcement from Proto Magical Girl. Um, this is GDQX. We are fighting for everything here. So just want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to Able Gamers. There are millions of people with disabilities who can't play video games without expensive specialized equipment. The Able Gamers charity helps gamers with disabilities by providing that equipment free of charge. But we can't do it without you. Help us help others. A day of gaming for you could mean a lifetime of gaming for someone else. Will you help us continue providing these customized gaming controllers? I think I'm about to hand off the mic to uh, a very fine gentleman next to me. All right, how's it going, GDQX? It is the Voix here taking over the mic for the next couple runs from the one, the only Big Honkin' Burger, aka Studio. Uh, we're getting set up for Environmental Station Alpha right now. Uh, so that run, by the way, if you've never seen that game, is a very, very fun uh, Metroidvania. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let me go ahead and get finish setting up here and then uh, see if we have some donations to read. Stay tuned. All right, I just want to remind people that we do have some donation incentives coming up. Uh, up right after this run is Splunky HD. Right now we have a character choice bid war going on uh, between Red Turban Guy, Blue Safari Guy, and Splunky Guy. Uh, currently Red Turban Guy is winning at $40 with Blue Safari Guy right behind at 15 If you want to change that selection before we get to uh, Splunky HD shortly, uh, go ahead and get those donations in. All right, we're going to run a really quick Twitch ad here, so stay tuned.
All right, and we're back. So I, I just want to remind everybody that GDQX is brought to you by uh, a couple of our different uh, charity events and such that we're helping out with, uh, one of which is St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Uh, they're leading the way the world understands, treats, and defeats childhood cancer and other life-threatening diseases. Your support helps ensure that families never receive a bill from St. Jude for treatment, travel, housing, or food. Because all a family should worry about is helping their child live. St. Jude has helped push the childhood cancer survival rate from less than 20% when we open to 80% today. We won't stop until no child dies from cancer. And that's a good cause. Oh, and uh, it looks like we do have a challenge coming up, actually, still for Splunky HD right after this run as well, uh, which needs about $383. No, wait, $283 uh, still for the Get Eaten Challenge. Um, so if you want to uh, see that, go ahead and get those donations in right before this run. Uh, coming up. And we have a $10 donation from Matthew G126, uh, who says, We get to see someone who has done a great job of announcing GDQs now get to show off her speedrun skills. This was talking about Proto Magical Girls Run just right before this. Uh, show us all that you are not just a great voice, Proto, and donation to Runner's Choice for that. Thank you for that donation during the run. I also want to give a special shout out to that giant burrito on the couch. Yeah, that's worth a clap. Let's go. 